Hi, it's Paula. It's uh, just gone 11 o'clock, so I thought I'd start my Facebook Live video today, uh, Friday the 5th of June. And what I was going to share today was how I make lace earrings. So I can't take credit for making the actual lace. I've got a very talented sister who makes those lace components for me. But what I'm doing is actually adding some different elements in terms of beads, crystals, pearls, those sorts of things to make those lace pieces become a really beautiful lightweight pair of earrings. So today I'm going to demonstrate how I make a pair of those and you'll get to see the tools I use, some of the tips around actually attaching the beads to the lace. And if you're interested in actually getting, good morning Lorraine, nice to see you here. If you're interested in actually getting some lace, I'll have some components available um, at the end of the demonstration so that you can actually make your own if you wish as well. And what I've really loved about using the lace pieces is actually having that as a really nice sort of three-dimensional piece in whether it's a beaded pendant or a pair of earrings. So I'm gonna show you a couple of other ways that I've used the lace components in my beadwork as well. So if you're ready, I'm actually gonna flip the camera around, so bear with me while I do the technical part of things and get ready to actually demonstrate making a pair of the grey daisy lace earrings. Good morning, Sue, thank you, nice to have you here as well. So bear with me while I just flip the camera around. So excuse, you know, looking at the roof and those sorts of things, but we'll uh, get there in a second, just a moment. So I'm just putting it onto my desktop so you'll be able to see then uh, as I actually demonstrate how I make these lace earrings. And as I said, I thought I'd... Good morning, Sharon. Nice to see you here too. I thought I'd show you some of the ways that I've used lace in my work. So this particular pendant here, this one is called... I call this the piece pendant. So it's a piece of polymer clay that I made and then I embellished it with a beautiful metal piece and some fringing and things like that. But you can see there it's actually got a lace decoration at the bottom of it. So that particular piece of lace was one like this. And I use that just to attach into the back of that beadwork there as well. So I think it just gives a really nice finish. It's a really nice lightweight um, way of adding some texture and dimension to a piece. So that's one way of using a lace component. The other things I've done is make things like these chandelier, I've called them chandelier earrings. So these use a blank lace component and they actually then have a beaded flower decoration and a little beaded drop on them as well. And I've got those listed in my store in a couple of other ways. Here's another way they've actually been utilised. So that's in a pink flower piece and that's got that lovely little beaded decoration in the centre of it. And the beauty of these is they're, they're really like super, super light, virtually nothing. So if you're someone who likes to wear a big earring but don't really want to have that heavy component on there, the lace components are a great way to add some texture and light um, but still a big statement look in your earring as well. And the ones I'm actually going to demonstrate today are these beautiful grey daisy pieces. So these are ones that I have have um, I have in yellow and pink and other colours. And this grey I think is you know gorgeous to wear in winter, a really nice subtle wintry colour. But just with that little pop of silver and the, the big pearl in the centre. Good morning Janine. Um, it's a really nice way to actually showcase a lace earring as well. So Today's lesson will be on how to make an earring like this particular one. And as I said, if you're interested in learning to make your own, you'll be able to do that with some lace components that I'll have available um, in the store. So one of the things that I use to make earrings is what's called Fireline. And I'll just flip that so you can see it. So for those people who haven't beaded before, Fireline is, um, it's actually a fishing line. And this is a six pound braided thread so it must catch really little fish I'd imagine but beaders have taken over fire line in this particular weight and colour as our thread of choice and uh, last year my son actually went to America and went to a bead shop Oh, sorry, to a fishing shop and bought me some great big rolls. And the man said to him, you know, what are you trying to catch with that little lightweight um, thread? He goes, oh, no, it's for my mum. So he knew that I was a mad beater by him buying that particular thread for me. So I've just threaded that onto my standard size 10 needle. I love a size 10 needle because it's nice and big and easy to manoeuvre. Um, and that particular thread is... It's something that blunts your scissors when you actually work with it, but it's a really strong thread for beading. So I'm just tying a little knot 
in the end of that so that will catch into the beadwork and then I'm taking my lace piece here. So with this lace, this is actually embroidered on a sewing machine. And there's a whole lots of, you know, different sort of templates and things that you can buy to make the different shapes. So as I said, my sister is very talented and she's made all of these beautiful shapes for me. And then I add, you know, different beads to them. So for this particular one, we're actually going to use the grey daisy piece. I'm going to use some size 8 um, CZ silver beads. These come from Cranby from Joe. I'm also going to use some um, little silver plated Maiki 2mm drops on those as well. And some size 15 CZ um, silver beads as well. There will also be an earring wire attached to it as well. So that will finish off that particular earring. And in the centre of that is what's an 8mm pearl. So pearls come in different sizes and an 8mm fits, look at that, just perfectly in the center of that particular flower. So the idea is to actually capture that so that it is um, secure, it's not gonna come off, and then we'll decorate around that with some beads. So to actually capture that, I'm actually gonna go into the lace here. And you can see I'm just sort of pushing the needle through that lace work there, not going through to the back, but just keeping all the thread work on the top of the piece that will then be covered off with beads. And because I've tied a knot in that, that's staying nice and secure. I'll just go through that a couple more times. Oh, hello, Vula, nice to see you here too. Uh, and tighten that off as well. So that's pretty secure then in my lace work. I'm then going to thread through the pearl and attach that to the other side of the of the lace work there. So just come through there a couple of times and attach that pearl. So it's nice and secure. Go back through the hole in the pearl again. Come through the other side there. So I'm going in and out of the lace work, but not right through to the back so that there's no um, threads showing on the back. Just catching a few of the threads of the lace here. And the, the lace work is interesting to work with. It's, it's not, um, it's quite stiff. So I'm, I'm actually using a bit of force to get that needle through there. Um, so it's not something that's actually going to, you know, go out of shape or bend or anything like that. They are actually stiffened. And the way they're made on the lace embroidery machine, you actually use like a soluble um, fabric to mount them on. And then once they've actually been embroidered on the sewing machine, then the, they're placed in a sort of a water bath for the soluble film to go away and then you're left with these beautiful shapes. So you can see there I've attached that pearl onto that particular um, lace piece and now I'm gonna do some size eight beads around the edge which are the center ones that are just there. And I love using size eight beads. I mean, a size eight bead sometimes can seem really big when we get used to using the really fine work in the size 15s, etc. But what I find with the size eights is they give you a really nice way to um, work quickly around a piece. Um, size 15s take a long time to do anything. Size eights, you do it in half the time. So what I'm doing now is actually adding, and when we're adding beads, I always will add in twos because it gives you an even number then to actually peyote around and peyote is the stitch that we actually build off a lot with beading so what i'm doing is a back stitch here around the edge of that pearl so i've picked up two beads and i hope you can all see please let me know in the comments if you can't see but i'm hoping you can see this properly so i've picked up two beads and i'm actually going to go through then please bring work up two scissors can't see oh up here is that is that easier for people to see there okay um i'll actually just move so i've just picked up two beads there and i'm now going to pick up another two beads here so as i said working in pairs go through here and i've just grabbed you know a couple of little threads here And what I'm doing now is I'm actually going to go through three beads. So this will actually, this back stitch technique now starts to make this ring of beads around that pearl secure. So you can see now I've got four beads. So I picked up two and then went through three. So same thing again, pick up two, 
just grab some of the thread there on the lace, pull that taut, and then come back through three beads there. And then when I pull that, you can see that starting to form that really nice ring around the beadwork. So around the pearl. Same thing again, pick up two, grab a few threads there on the on the lace. I just miss that. That was a fresh air shot. Uh, grab a few threads there. Go back around through. And you can see that tail that's there. I'll cut that off shortly. That's from when I actually added the um, thread in the first instance. And because I knotted it, I'll be able to just remove that um, from the, the finished earring. Pick up another two. Go through a couple of threads. There. Go through three beads. So, so far I've added on, how many have I added on? Two, four, six, eight, ten. I think I'll probably end up with about 16 beads around this, which ironically it's a size eight pearl and I'm going to be adding 16 beads, which when you divide that makes eight. There's a lot of maths in beading um, and I wasn't ever very good at maths at school, but it's amazing how I still use some of those principles around dividing by particular numbers to create what is, you know, a symmetrical piece of beadwork. And I do like to work in symmetry as well. Uh, another two beads here again, go through those couple of threads, pull that tight, come back through three beads. So every time I'm actually re-securing down not only the two that I've just added, but the previous beads in that round as well. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, so 16 beads. So what I'm gonna do here is actually go right through that particular join there. And you can see there now, I've now got a beautiful, perfect ring around that particular pearl. So to make sure that those two last beads that I added are secured, I'll just, you know, sort of grab in here somewhere, come back up through, it keeps grabbing on my thread, um, grow, go back through that ring and then a really good way to make that a nice round ring is to just run the thread all the way through and I've just unthreaded my needle so bear with me while I re thread that and I'm going to move that out of the way uh, thread that again you can see if you haven't actually seen what a beading needle looks like they actually have a you know a really um, straight up edge to them the holes are tiny and there is a technique in actually threading a beading needle like that you actually bring the thread to the needle rather than try and you know poke it like you would with a normal sewing needle uh, and so I'll continue just going around that ring, making it a really nice firm ring as well, and nice and even. And by going around, it actually sort of turns all the beads to be facing the same and correct way, pulling that tight. And look how lovely that looks. There's a really nice firm ring around that pearl. So the decoration that I've actually done with these earrings, and, and I do change um, the decoration on these, you know, as I sort of, as the inspiration hits me. So what I'm doing with these ones is adding what's called a two mil silver plated Mayuki drop. So these little drop beads, they look like a little teardrop and they've got a tiny little hole uh, on them as well. You can see the little hole is there, but they're shaped, and the hole is at the bottom, and they're shaped like a little drop. So those beads will make a really pretty petal um, just around this de decoration. And <laughs> yes, yes, Janine, I'd love to see kids can learn um, mat beading and use their maths for it. That'd be great. Um, because these are size eight beads, they have a really nice gap there to actually add something to them. So I'm now, I've come out of a size eight bead, I've added a pearl drop onto my needle. And what I'm doing now is just going through two beads like that, pulling that tight and look how that little petal just sits out between those two beads. So this decoration, it's, it's really, it's quite simple, 
but it looks really classy because it's the tone of, you know, the three greys all together. Oh, thanks, Andrula. It's lovely to have that feedback. The three greys all coming together, the darker grey of the pearl, the bright silver of the seed beads in the Mayuki drop, and then the matte grey of the lace. And it just makes a really nice earring um, component when it's finished. So I'll keep adding those Mayuki drops all the way around. You can see how that's now forming a flower on our beadwork. Uh, well, keep, keep telling me if I go out of focus or you can't see what I'm doing. I'm trying to remember to keep it so that everybody can see it easily. Uh, it looks a little bit like, you know, like a an um, you know, a ship wheel, I think, you know, where a captain would stand at the top of the ship and have his little boat with all the handles and well, there's probably a proper word for what that's called, but uh, that's what it sort of reminds me of. And come through here again. And now you can see that little silver flower is now finished. And because of the way that I've attached the beads around the edge, there are no threads at the back, so that goes back to, you know, sort of competition days and CWA and those things where you like to keep your back of your work as neat as the front. And you can see here how tidy that actually looks. So my job now is to secure this thread so that those beads actually don't come off. So to do that, I'll just go through to, a, you know, an easy sort of space to find somewhere to just do a couple of little tiny stitches in here just to secure that that thread in here and then what, what what i'm going to do then is actually add in a little loop that sits at the top of the earring so that i can hang an earring wire off that as well so i'm just sort of making that um, little thread there really neat look i've even got the opportunity to go back through that center pearl there as well so anywhere you can to make that secure and tight is worth doing. So now I've gone through that pearl again. So not only at the start of the beadwork, but also at the end, I'm gonna push that needle all the way through to the back. And as I said, sometimes the lace can be a bit stiff to work with. I have been known to grab a pair of pliers and use that. And what I'm gonna do now is just cut off that thread and I'm also going to cut off that little tiny bit of tail thread that's there as well. So there's the actual earring component in itself finished. But what I need to do now is add on a loop like this one to be able to then hang the earring wire off. So the way I've done that particular loop, it's got a size 8 bead there in the centre. It's got a little loop of I think probably 8 or 9 beads at the top that the wire hangs off. And then it's got a loop of about 7 little beads that go through the lace work. So to use that, I'm actually using the size 15 beads. So these are, you know, much smaller in terms of beaders. These are, these are beautiful to work with, but they're also much, much smaller in comparison. So if you look at a size 8 bead compared to a size 15 bead, you can see how much slower it is to work in these versus working in the size 8 ones. But they do give a really nice decorative finish. So what I'm doing is finding a spot to actually create my loop. And I think on the other pair, I've actually done that through this bit here. So I've got the bridge there of the lace um, and the bottom part of the flower in the top. And this will actually create that really nice loop. So what I'm going to do first is pick up uh, probably seven, seven beads, maybe seven or eight. And when, when we work with a... Um, a beaded board like this. The velvet is fantastic because it actually helps the beads actually sit up so that the holes of them face the top and it's really easy to then pick them up with your needle. So I've now got, um, does my sister sell the lace? I actually sell the lace, Janine. So there is some lace work that is available on my site. I get her to make them all for me and uh, then I sell them on her behalf. So I don't make her work for slave labour. I do, I do actually pay her for doing this part for me. But she's the expert when it comes to sewing, so I get her to do that. So you can see there I've gone through that um, loop there and I'm actually just going to go around in a circle. So I'll go through the first bead added, go around in a circle, and I've now made a loop 
around that particular top of the earring. But what I'm going to do is go through that a couple of times to make that really secure. You'll note I didn't do a knot or anything here to attach the thread to this piece because I want this to be free um, standing rather than actually attached. But by going through it several times, that will make it really secure around that lace uh, piece there as well. So I'll keep going around and around and if I pull the tail part tighter that makes that ring even tighter again and I will go through again here. Now you can see this particular ring goes uh, oh, what's the right way perpendicular to the actual um, lace work but what I need to be able to attach an earring wire is for the ring to be going in the opposite direction because I want the earring ring to be facing this way so that I can attach the ring through the other end of it. So I'll go through here and add some more thread through that ring keep making it really tight and you can probably get you know four or five passes through these little beads with your needle and thread um, before it becomes too jammed up. You can always swap to a finer needle, but I personally don't like a fine needle. I break them and bend them and whatever. I like the nice big fatter needles to work with. So I will try and get through as many times as I can. Now you can see that I'm pulling that really tightly. That's not coming apart and I haven't knotted that or stitched it, but the thread is filling the holes of those, knee, uh, holes of those beads so that it stays secure. So my next thing will be to add a size 8 bead. And the idea behind the size 8 is that that then gives me a point now to make a round loop to go the other way. So I'm going to now add about probably 10 beads, I think, is enough. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Actually, I'm going to do 11. I tend to like to work in odd numbers for these types of loops. I'm going to go back down through... Um, my ring, so I've gone through the size eight bead and through that ring, and I'm just gonna go once more around through the, the ring like this. And through that way. Come all the way back through. And then go up through that size eight bead. Hello, Linda. Oh, my goodness, my son is actually watching this. Hello, Ryan. Haven't you seen your mother bead enough over the years? This is you, you obviously got the day off if you're watching. Um, so I'm going to go round through here again and go through. Thanks, Linda. It looks really good. It's nice and nice to work with these lace pieces because you get a really great earring component in a, a relatively short space of time. So I've gone round again through that loop. But instead of going, when I get to the bottom, instead of going back down through the lace work, I'm actually going to go around the loop itself. So you can hear, see here I'm at the size 8B there. You see that. What I'm going to do is just flip over and go back up around the other side there. When I can get my needle in the bead. There, I've just gone right through and across the top of that size eight bead like that. So now I've got a loop that is facing, oh, my niece is watching as well. My God, I'm feeling very popular today. My son, my niece, my daughter-in-law, thank you. Um, go across there. Erin, would you like to come and learn beading with Auntie Paula? No response. <laughs> uh, so I'll go around here like this. And now that loop that I'm actually, hi Kim, that I've made to put the, <laughs> the uh, earring wire through is really secure. I've gone through that a few times now. Go once more, as I said, as many times as I possibly can, I will fill those beading bead holes with thread. So I'll go through once more like that until it's actually um, really securely attached because this is what our earring wire is going to hang off. And, and ideally, you, you don't want those to come apart. I mean, sometimes that does happen with beadwork. It's, it is made by hand and it is using very fine thread and fine um, beads, etc. So occasionally there'll be a breakage. 
but it's easily repairable as well. Um, so yeah, if you ever do have a peace of mind and there is a breakage, I apologize in advance if that does happen, but I'm happy to replace or repair those for you as well because it can be a little bit fragile sometimes too. So you can see I'm really pushing that through now because it's really getting filled with thread. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to cut off. There, I've pulled that really tight now, that whole loop. I'm actually going to cut off that thread tail there and the thread tail on the other side, which is where I started with that. Just going to cut that off and now I have a really nice I'm just going to oh there it is earring component that is finished and I like to use this all just to make that loop a really nice round shape as well so the next thing to do is actually add the earring wire onto that so that you'll see a finished piece and these particular earring wires that I like to use have a um, I use all different sorts of ones, but this particular one has a nice ball um, end on it. So that holds the earring actually secure in the loop and it's easy to attach onto that wire. So this is the type of earring wire that I like to use. So I'll just thread that through the hole like that and then push that through and you can see now that earring is actually a finished earring piece. So that's a demonstration on how I use lace earrings to make the daisy lace. The other style I like to use is what's called a chandelier. So I've done these in a couple of different ways and this particular one has got a similar, uh, would I burn off the ends? Um, sometimes I burn the ends, Lorraine, it just depends on what I'm actually doing. But I tend to find with these, it doesn't need it. And for me, the burning part of it comes down to um, what sort of fabric this is going into. And I think because all of these are really sort of stiff, the thread doesn't come out of them um, as easy as it would that something is silky. That's just been my experience with it, but you could burn it if you wanted to as well. Um, so with something like this one, this has got a little bit of a different pattern. I've used actually a drop that I got from Linda at, at Banjo Beads um, a couple of weeks ago. So this is just a drop sort of pearl that's got a little tiny um, hole in the back of it. And I've attached that one there and then done some rose gold beading around it. Similarly, I've done the little black Moyuki drops on that particular one and then just added another little drop feature on there as well so that's another earring style the chandelier style as I said there's a pink daisy lace looking one and you can see there some of the lace components I've put and this one has a different style of earring hook on it that's actually got a ring attached to it so I didn't need to do a beaded ring at the top all I've just done is attach that directly onto that particular lace piece um, another style that I love to use is these blue lace ones as well. So these look really good with a great big feature bead in the center of them. And it's a style that I've had a, quite a few of those um, mushroom bead. There you go. That's the name for that little black pearl, a mushroom bead. Um, these look really good with a nice big centerpiece and then a drop on them. But what I like about these ones is they're great for having a stud finish at the top of them. So you can actually put a hook stud on that one rather than an earring wire. So it's a really good way just to utilize the different shapes in the lace beading. And as I said at the start, if you missed that particular one, this is another way that I've used a lace component is in the pendant piece. So on my bead embroidered piece that I've created here, you know, with a bit of polymer clay and the fringing, etc., on that, I've actually utilised lace to finish off the pe that piece. It gives it a really nice um, dimension in terms of shape and has added, uh, you know, that sort of three-dimensional textural shape with the lace component. And that was a piece of lace that looked just like this one that are... Uh, that I have added on to that particular pendant piece. So I think if you've if you've enjoyed that, please let me know. You know, I'm happy to do these sort of Facebook Live things. I, I'm glad people really enjoy them and watch them. Um, as I said, there'll be some uh, lace component packs available on my site, which will be two pairs of um, chandeliers. So a black pair and a, a blue pair, 
or a black pair, or sorry, there'll be black blank ones like this, black pair and a pink pair. So they'll be available if you wish to have a go at making some of these earrings yourself. And of course, if you don't want to, I'm more than happy to make them for you as well. So thanks everybody for watching my Facebook Live today on lace earrings. This will be available on the um, Facebook page after the event, so you can watch it again if you wish to. And of course, next month, I'm gonna do a little bit of a demonstration on using some shibori silk in the back of pendants. So thanks everybody for watching. Have a great long weekend and uh, keep safe and happy beading. Bye-bye.